why is the MCU so successful? It's a question many people have asked, and many have given answers. To put it simply, they found a formula, it worked, and now they had the creative space to build upon that and provide quality entertainment to families, to children, to anyone of all ages, fans of the comics, casual fans, anyone at all. You may have noticed the MCU started off like I said, formulaic, many of the movies felt like repetitions to themselves. Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man all had similar formulas. Some movies took risks. Captain America was one of them. The Winter Soldier was a big switch up and is still to this day my favourite Marvel movie. But then some didn't take many risks. You've got your fours, your four the Dark World. They didn't exactly play it safe. But they didn't really play anything at all. They were quite lacklustre and it's only until recently that every Marvel movie I have felt has been at least good to amazing. The early days were a bit of a struggle sometimes. As a kid, uh, I was quite young when they started. As a child, I enjoyed every Marvel movie. I loved them. I thought they were great and you don't really see the problems until you become a little bit older. In the new phases, phase four and onwards, we started to see more TV series come into play. Very hit or miss, I would say that Marvel and Disney aren't putting the effort they should be into these series. There have been some very lacklustre uh, moments. Moon Knight especially was a surprisingly lacklustre and quite boring series for what was my most anticipated Disney Plus series. I think they peaked at WandaVision and Loki and some of their other series have just been just been there and they could have really done more but they do help i feel like having these series is a good way to build the universe past the early phases to get bring in new characters or focus on old characters that need a place to shine somewhere where they're not getting it in the movie so you've got moon knight clearly isn't getting into a movie anytime soon. You've got the new Daredevil series coming out, which hopefully is a continuation of some sorts of the Netflix series. Um, of course, Daredevil has been in one movie and it was for five seconds <laughs> and he wasn't in uh, as Daredevil. So we'll see where they go with that. Um, you've got Hawkeye, who probably should have had a movie a long time ago, but the series was good. I enjoyed it. I don't think it was amazing or great but it was good. But we have seen a reflection on the actual movies themselves. Every movie they brought out recently has been at least good. <laughs> you know, you've got the likes of the new Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, two of the best movies they've done in a while, for Ragnarok, the latest Avengers movies, and there's so much more planned. They've moved away from this formulaic, okay, we need to do this, we need to do that. We've gone to, okay, this is the director's vision, this is what we're going with, as long as it keeps within the canon, within the storylines that we've already set, it will be fine. Uh, okay, they disagree a lot. There was the, the whole deal with, I believe, Edgar Wright um, for Ant-Man, but while there are missteps, I believe as a whole the MCU is better off. And if we compare it to the DCEU, which is in an absolute shambles, which hurts as a DC fan, but not all of it, well, none of it is down to the directing in my opinion. The problem has been a lot of the time the scripts, uh, Warner Brothers, and some of the actors doing silly things behind the scenes. I won't comment on Amber Heard, but I will comment on Ezra Miller. Uh, Ezra Miller, what are you doing? <laughs> why, are you, why are you doing this to The Flash, please? But we'll get a good idea of how studio intervention can be a really bad thing. Marvel has had its fair share of intervention, but not to the level that Warner Brothers has done to DC. The biggest example is Justice League. Zack Snyder's Justice League is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Uh, you might not enjoy that. I'm a big DC fan and that movie was incredible. <laughs> it's, it's, it had a great character development. The original Justice League was not a good movie, in the slightest, <laughs> and that was down to Warner Brothers uh, interjecting to a change of directors which was only supposed to finish the movie that Zack Snyder started but ended up recreating it in some sort of messed up 
fantasy. <laughs> um, God, that movie sucks. But this is an example of studio intervention being a bad thing and them having to backtrack to put out a movie that the majority of people loved. Where Marvel does the opposite, while they do have studio intervention sometimes, they have a storyline, they have a set storyline, the director's original vision, in this case Kevin Feige, who has set out and planned what is next for this universe. Some, is, some of it is good, some of it isn't so good, but we'll wait and see um, what the future holds and he's done a good job so far. DC had that, they had Zack Snyder, they had Jeff Johns. Um, Jeff Johns, slightly disappointing as someone who's enjoyed his comic books in the past, he, he wasn't what what he should have been, but Zack Snyder had a vision, they were going along with that vision, and they just decided to inter intervene constantly, and it's something that's not happening to that level for Marvel, and it's why they're successful. They've built a universe from scratch, maybe not even intentionally uh, from the start they were supposed to, maybe this wasn't their intention from the start, but it's what this has led up to. And it's one of the most profitable, if not, well, it's definitely the most profitable series ever. The amount of movies they brought out, the MCU is riding high. So that's basically why they're successful. It's, it's, there's little much to it. The studio's on their side for the most part. The directors get to show their vision. Uh, Taika Waititi, uh, for example, with For Ragnarok, turned a stale series into one of Marvel's best and I hope he continues on with that with Thor Love and Thunder. You can come back to this video and tell me how that turned out but like I said that's where they shine. They've got a universe, they planned it out, no one's movies being scratched halfway through. If you're not in line with the vision you're not doing it anyway which can be a bad thing but we're talking about why they're successful, why they're successful to the audience, why people love the movies because people love the sense that there's a connection, there's, oh, this character appeared in that movie 10 years ago, oh, this character had a minor role in Ant-Man but now is in this series, you know, that like, anything like that will draw people in, and while it doesn't always work, when you've got a vision that isn't ultimately broken, uh, where everyone's keeping in line and you're not getting told halfway through that, no, we're not doing this, here's a new director, uh, okay, Zack Snyder's situation was a bit different than that, but here's a new director, he's going to change the movie entirely and take out a major character that was setting up another movie and killing any interest. You don't do that, and it's why Marvel and Disney are so successful where Warner Brothers has failed. So if you've enjoyed this video, let us know if you want to see more, uh, give us a like and subscribe trying to get into the groove of these videos and I haven't written a script I'm just coming off all of this by uh, by my head so a lot of it might be rambly I apologize I'm gonna try and edit this to the best of my ability but I wanted to at least bring out something that gives an opinion or answers a question uh, in in my opinion and at least provides a bit of a discussion as to why this certain thing is happening or why this certain thing has happened. I'd like to know why you think the MCU has been successful and why Warner Brothers has failed with their ventures with DC. But yeah, let me know and I'll see you next time.